Hi, everybody. Claudia here from Hugo Coffee. As we all know, because we've been at this for some time, Hugo Coffee gives back to animal rescues nationwide, and we do so by hosting fundraisers weekly with our partner rescue organizations and pursuant to which during the course of a week-long fundraiser online, Hugo donates $2.50 for every item sold on their website, on our website, not their, our, during the course of that week. So here we are today with Kendall and Susie from Wags and Wiggles. Hi, Kendall and Susie. Hello. Now, who is who is going to tell me all about Wags and Wiggles? I want to know that where you are, how, why you are, how long you've been, and like what your geographic reach is. Yeah. That'd be great. I'd love to give you that information. Um, my name is Susie. I'm actually the vice president of Wags and Wiggles Dog Rescue, and I'm mm -hmm. happy to be here with you today. It's fantastic. Now, where is Wags and Wiggles? We are located in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Okay. And how long have you been around? We've been around since 2018. Um, okay. so we're fairly new mm -hmm. rescue, um, but we saw a need for the medically needy dogs, they weren't getting the same type of attention as, you know, all the sweet, cute puppies. And so we started up our rescue to help those medically needy dogs. That's wonderful. Now, here's got many questions. Yeah. One, are you a foster based rescue? Yes, we are currently completely 100% foster volunteer based. We do have hopes for a facility in the hopefully near ish future. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, currently. All of our foster dogs live in our volunteers' personal homes. That's awesome. I'm thinking of doing it next month. Yeah. The last time <laughs> I fostered, I adopted Hugo. <laughs> I'm, and a then, and then, I, I'm a total foster fail. But, but anyway, yay for that. And now tell me, where do you find the animals that you are helping? Oh, gosh. So everywhere. Okay. Um, primarily, we focus Midwest based so obviously local here fort wayne indiana mm -hmm. area ohio kentucky is a big one we work with um but honestly if you can get them to us we'll take them okay okay and so do you get do you, do you pull do you pull medical medical need, medically needy animals from your local shelters yes or, or and do you get referrals from other rescues who know that you deal with medical needs so they might you know, ask your help in one of their, for one of their cases? Yeah, uh, kind of both. Um, so we recently were able to be an approved foster for our local animal care and control. Mm -hmm. um, and personally, I've taken two dogs that were medically needy from our local shelter. They were amputees. Mm -hmm. um, one was a local neglect case. So they had to remove the dog from the shelter to protect him from the family they removed him from. Um, so we call it witness protection. <laughs> and so he came and we were able to adopt him out of state. So that worked out perfectly. But yeah, uh, shelters have kind of gotten word that, hey, if you have a medical case in, you know, shelters don't have the funds or the ability to treat those, they'll reach out to us and see if we're able. That's awesome. Now, tell me about the how you learned about the medically needy animals that, that you have, that you, you, a problem that you decided to address in 2018 when you started your, when you started Wags and Wiggles, how, how did the problem come to you? Um, so I wasn't part of Wags and Wiggles back in 2018, mm -hmm. but it was the, our original founder, she was fostering for a different rescue and kept getting like, you know, the emails that rescues get, hey, can you help my dog? Um, hey, can you pull these dogs from our shelter? And she saw that need was being overlooked. Mm. And so that's how we, we started. Mm -hmm. That's great. Now, how many, um, how many animals can you have at any given time in foster? With, assuming, assume your foster network is maxed out. How many animals are in foster at any one time with you? Um, currently, we have 35 total dogs in mm -hmm. a network of about 15 to 20 people, mm -hmm. um, well, homes, 15 to 20 homes. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if we have a place to foster them, I know at one point I had eight, hold on, seven, nine fosters in my house. Good God. Um, and they were all medically needy? 
No. Well, the mom, it, I had a mama dog and six puppies and mm -hmm. mom was severely emaciated. Okay. And so we, I made sure to bring her and all her beautiful babies. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then we have had two feral dogs um, that we, you know, we domesticated. <laughs> God woman. Yeah. Um, so I, if our fosters will take them, we'll take in as many as we can. That's There's amazing. But we don't currently have like a set hard limit. Okay. So if we can help, we'll put it, we'll do it. Do you have a sense as to how many dogs find their forever home annually through you guys? Um, about 150 to 200 dogs That's come through our a year and find their forever homes. That's great. I mean, and particularly for such a kind of young yeah. rescue. Yeah. That's pretty, that's pretty amazing. And also when you add the to it that there that you have medical needs going yeah. on at the same time. Yeah. So you you need to find not only forever homes, but forever homes that can handle the added the added medical take needs. On the yeah. Take okay. on those issues. Fortunately, a lot of our dogs so far have been like short-term medical mm -hmm. needs. So this summer we saw a lot of leg issues. Um, so we had a lot of amputees come through where they still had their broken limbs when they came to us and we got them taken care of. Um, I had one, she had an unknown eye injury when she was picked up by the local animal care and control. So we got mm -hmm. her eye removed. Mm -hmm. um, and then last winter I had one, he came to us, we found out he had a spine infection. Oh gosh. Got him all cleared up and That's all great. those, all those dogs are in forever homes now. That's fantastic. Now, you know, our, our office dog is a tripod. Uh, they hold a special place in my heart. Um, uh, um, EPT that just got adopted. He is now a brewery dog and <laughs> his owner works at a local brewery and they take him in there and they named him hops, <laughs> the tripod. And because he works, he lives in a, well, he doesn't live there, but he works in a brewery now. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so as you, you probably met Beth, Beth is, mm -hmm. is our philanthropy manager and she, uh, we did a fundraiser for a local rescue called fetch cares and in so doing we met jack the tripod and jack the tripod finally melted best cold black heart after she <laughs> lost her beloved scarlet and which she swore she would never get another dog but jack and by the way jack smiles too oh i love that smiling tripod that's it's like unbelievable yeah they're fantastic they're the best that's so the great they have more room in the heart that's right. Now tell me a little bit. I I understand because this is really something that means a lot to me. Mm -hmm. I don't, you probably don't know this, but I used to run an animal rescue. Oh, wow. In a former life. And during my time as the executive director, I created a program called the Purple Paw Project because we had a domestic violence shelter that wouldn't take dogs, wouldn't take the pets. So, and then, um, so we, we provided short-term care while the, while the domestic violence victims got up on their feet and figured out their lives. And we did that. And then that has now, I, I, that program still exists. And we have an organization in Salt Lake that does something similar to what you guys do. So tell me about your program of temporarily taking care of people's animals. So we do compassionate foster. So it's just short-term or long-term if needed, temporary housing for your personal pets in our local community for people facing homelessness. You know, the economy has gotten really hard and we understand that. Um, we take in, if you're facing drug addiction, alcohol addiction, and you know, you seek treatment, a lot of that is inpatient and you just need to focus on yourself. So we will find fosters, bring your dogs in and, you know, get them up to date and completely vetted while they're with us as well. So when you get them, they're completely healthy and up to date on their shots and everything. This is a question. During the time that the that the pet is in compassionate foster, can the the owner visit? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. We would okay. not break that bond with you and your pet because we yeah. we all have currently have or have had what we call our soul dogs. So we understand how strong that bond is and we're not going to break that. My dog, my soul dog was Hugo. Yeah. 
and Hugo passed away last month. Oh gosh, I why know. the best I can consider at the moment is fostering. Yeah, even though I have a bad reputation, mm -hmm. I have a bad ex not bad experience. I loved it, but I also am a failure at it. So like, yeah. I have to be careful. <laughs> yeah, we, where Foster fails, um, he's a pet lab husky mix, and he is the love of my husband's life. Mm -hmm. And my husband's goal one day is to open his own brewery. And he's already decided we will have a foster fail pale ale where the proceeds of that beer go to our rescue. Oh, that's so great. Foster fail pale ale. Yeah. That's amazing. So, okay. Now tell me, so, so, do, you have, do you have any other kind of educational programs, any kind of outreach that you do? Yeah, we recently worked with a hoarding, a severe hoarding case mm. where he kept reaching out to us to take his, he was inbreeding to get double Merrill puppies. And so we what? kept, so to get like double Merrill, very pale Merrill dogs that are, everyone loves, that requires inbreeding. What are Merrills? Merrills, they're kind of like, um, just the coloring. Yeah, it's a color, kind of like a brindle. Okay. Is it a particular breed? Um, typically, like your Aussies are Merrill, your Aussie dogs. Okay. And to get those, you have to inbreed? Yes. Oh. And so that is just asking for sick puppies. And so he kept asking to bring his sick puppies to us and owner surrender them. So eventually we got him to give us all the adult dogs and we spayed and neutered all of them to stop, stop it. <laughs> Yeah, totally. So, yeah. And honestly, we find a lot of this on like Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist. We'll find like free puppies or something like that. And then so then we work with those owners to get their dogs spayed and neutered to stop the overbreeding and the sickness that is happening. Oh, I think that's wonderful. And is that just something that you do like kind of ad hoc or is that like something that it's like one of the, the things you do this week? We're going to we're going to check every week. We check Craigslist. We check Facebook Marketplace. And we look for people giving away puppies? Yeah, Jenny and I, Jenny is our president and owner. And between the two of us, I think we maybe get like four hours of sleep oh, God. A, a day because we're just, you know, constantly thinking, what can we do to help our community to help the overpopulation mm -hmm. and educate on spaying and neutering and, you know, get their dogs vetted and why it's so important for microchipping. Right. And we do all this outreach on top of trying to, you know, help all the foster all the right. dogs. I have one right. stirring up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And all, and also the 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 magnitude of the impact of spaying and neutering is so important. You know, you're spaying and neutering one animal, but you're preventing tenfold or more than tenfold of unwanted animals being born. Of puppies, I mean, you're looking six sometimes ten puppies from one dog and right. if you made or neutered that's less dogs in need right and and that's six to ten puppies per maybe, month. maybe annually yeah well a uh, female goes into heat i think every three months oh, uh, really? they have more than one litter a year yeah oh my god so it really it must it's factors of i mean the impact is just tremendous. And that's what's so important to get that word out because it's not the most sexy thing to talk about, right? Spaying and neutering. No. You know, you want to talk about the warm and fuzzy part of adopting and, you know, forever homes and that kind of thing. But we can't adopt our way out of this problem. No, there's not. Spaying and neutering is the thing we've got to do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You got to care for the ones we have. Absolutely. Right. right. All right. Now, Susie and Kendall, we got to, we have. Let's see, it's Wednesday. So we have four and a half more days of a seven day online fundraiser. So we got to get the word out because I know you have a large fan base on that Facebook. We do, yeah. It's mm -hmm. pretty good for an organization from 2018. That's awesome. So we got to get the word out and get your fan base and we'll get our fan base to buy coffee, buy swag. If you don't drink coffee, we have fantastic mugs. We have we have t-shirts, we have, we, have, and we have tons of stuff. We have dog toys, we have dog bowls. You could buy something and we donate $2.50 for every item sold, not just an order. Every item in the order is $2.50. So we got to get the word out because we have four and a half more days to spread the word and get people to get excited. The Christmas presents of coffee and mugs and dog toys. Yeah. And we also want to know 
assuming we kill it because you you've activated your fan base and we've activated ours and it's Christmas time and everybody just wants to buy great coffee. Um, what would you do with three to five hundred dollars if we could raise that kind of money? Oh my gosh, that would have a tremendous impact to um, just go towards the bedding of mm. our dogs. Um, we recently, I mean, we take abandoned pets from vet offices or like our local vet hospitals. And we recently took in a dog who was hit by a car and shattered her leg. Two year old lab, they were going to euthanize her because they couldn't afford the care. So they abandoned her there and she's now in our care. And so that that totally goes towards vetting just on vet, you know, spay, neuter, microchipping, plus all the added extra medical expenses. We've spent almost $40,000 this year just at our vet. So that's not food and supplies that we give, provide all of our fosters with. Right. That's crazy. And you know, the vets are probably giving you a great, a good deal too. So you're, you're doing a lot of impact with that $40,000 of medical expenses. Yeah. Our, the owner of our rescue actually works in cahoots with the, like her job is at a boarding and grooming facility attached to a vet's office. And that's where we vet all of our dogs at. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, I, I haven't, I don't know if Beth told you this, but I have another brand called fluffy cow coffee. Okay. And- the fluffy cow gives to farm animal sanctuaries. Oh, I love that. So we supported yes. a we supported a, a a farm animal sanctuary outside Pittsburgh, but the person who runs it is a vet at a shelter. Oh, a dog, wow. like that's her job. She just spays and neuters all day long, then she comes home and takes care of farm animals. Yep, it's amazing. The rescue life is all consuming. Yes, it is. <laughs> It really is. And the, and the, the rescue passion is always there, right? The passionate folk like you who do this great work around the country. It's, it's just wonderful for us to see. I was not a particularly great ED because I really didn't like, I couldn't handle like the things you deal with. Mm-hmm. That made me very upset. So instead I launched a, com- a roasted coffee company, named it after my dog and give back to animal. Rescue. <laughs> that's, and that's what my husband wants to do. I tell him, I work my regular nine to five job so that we can afford to keep helping with the rescue. Cause that's what I, I love. That's my passion. Absolutely. Yeah, now, and final thing before we, before I say goodbye and have a great weekend and we're, you know, rah, rah. Have you had the coffee? I haven't had the pleasure yet, but my order is getting ready to be placed. Absolutely. Okay. Cause I'm telling you, and you can spread this word too. The coffee's damn good. It's not, we're not just, you know, a mission with crappy coffee. We have fantastic five-star coffee that's served in five-star restaurants and resorts. It's really high-end coffee. Oh, wow. It's good and helps animals. Which means I now have to get my dad to order because he is a coffee snob. Yep. Your dad needs to become a subscriber. And then we need to give you a shortened URL so that every time your dad gets his subscription, we donate to you. That would be awesome. I know. Well, we're figuring on that in 2024. That's what we're going to be doing. Absolutely. A number of things we're doing in 2024, and we're also going to launch a cat brand. Oh, I love that. We've actually, (laughs) we always call them our weird looking dogs. And so we will um, adopt out cats that get abandoned at the, the vet's office. That's great. That's great. All right. Now, Susie and Kendall, we have our job to do. It's Christmas time. It's time to give great gifts that support Wags and Wiggles so that we can help these medically challenged, beautiful babies that you're saving all the time. And we want to do as, have as much impact as we can. So we got to get people to buy, buy, buy. And I can't wait for Monday so I can Venmo you or write you a check. And I hope it's a biggie. I hope so, too. All that right. Be, you know, Christmas miracle. Yeah, Chris, that's what we're hoping for, a Christmas miracle. All right, ladies. Well, you have a wonderful rest of your week, and we will talk to you on Monday. Yeah, talk to you on Monday. Have a great rest of your week. Okay, Thank bye. Thank you so much. Bye. bye.